everybody. It is Donna with Photonic Health. And on this episode of Health Made Simple, we are chatting again with Charlie and Larry from Podega, and they hail from Dubai. Welcome, you guys. I'm glad to have you back. Thank you so much Thank for having so us. Much. We're excited to be here. Yes, we're so yeah. excited. Yes. So in our uh, last interview, um, our last chat we had together, we talked a lot about um, how you guys got started in the business, what your philosophies on feeding your dogs are. Um, you guys have a Frenchie. You've done a lot with IVDD with them and you've had great successes. And I applaud you guys for that because that's, um, you know, it's, I think it's an education thing for the um, public. They, there's just a lack of education on this disease can be minimized and sometimes even prevented just like what you guys did. Um, mm -hmm. And I would like to really dig a little bit deeper into that because in our last interview, we started talking about your philosophy on supplementation and supplementation can be a really slippery slope and people can get really confused because they see all of these social media facebook instagram and you know take this take this take this feed your dog this feed your dog this and it's great advertising but they're really not talking about the nutritional aspect of it um so before we get into that can you guys go through and just give me like your real simple version of like when you start out or if somebody's going to start supplementing their dog, like what do you guys, what would you start with? What's the foundation? Like what's your, your core, your core aspect of that? Yes, absolutely. It's a great question. So whenever um, someone asks us, we get this question daily what is what are the supplements that I should feed? And I would say if you could only take just one thing, I would probably sit, we would say pre and probiotics. And the only reason why we would say that is because over 80% of the immune system lays in the gut. And so when we're able to provide the body with beneficial bacteria, we're actually helping to support the immune system. So we're helping to improve uh, brain health, we're helping to improve skin health and so many other organs within the body and helping to reduce chronic inflammation as well. Um, that would be like the, the very first thing we would recommend. Yeah. If you can go beyond that, then the second thing we always recommend to our um, community is liver and kidney support. So that will be herbal supplements, um, mostly tinctures and powders that uh, will help support liver and kidney health, which is incredibly health, uh, it's incredibly important in our environment today because our dogs and cats and even horses are just so bombarded with toxins that is just unnatural uh, to them and their bodies need help. Uh, if this is this is very important when it comes to disease prevention, which we always want to help everyone to help prevent disease rather than, having to invest so much money, time, and stress uh, into hoping for a cure that may never come, right? Mm -hmm. So nice. first thing, like Larry said, is probiotics. The second thing, liver and kidney support. And, and I would say the third thing, if you can add another one on top of that, would be antioxidants. So antioxidants are super important because antioxidants actually help to fight the free radicals within the body, which are largely responsible for causing cancer. So if we're able to add antioxidants, we help to fight those free radicals. And then we also help to improve other areas of health within the body. So a lot of people don't know this, but over 50% or nearly 50% of dogs over the age of 10 are diagnosed with cancer at some point within their life. So if we're able to add antioxidants into the diet, we're actually proactively helping to make sure that they don't become a part of that statistic. So Correct. that's those, those would be like the three areas of health that we would focus on the most. And then from there, then we would look at different areas of the body. Yeah. yeah. And one, one um, question that we get a lot is like, when should we start? Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. with supplements or uh, sometimes also people will tell us, oh, um, sounds great. I'll come back when my dog has a problem. And this is exactly what, like the opposite of what we wish to achieve with our holistic and natural store is we provide all of these effective natural solutions to not only help you address certain concerns naturally, but most importantly, help prevent these things from happening. So, you know, it's like, that's why we have these three categories. You can, if you can only do one at a time, do one at a time, that will be amazing already. It's an, it's an amazing proactive approach already. If you can do all three, that's amazing too. Right. I am. I, I love how succinct you guys are on one, two, three. And um, I'd like to delve into the aspect of why support the liver and kidney? Because, you know, we've got, you know, other, bo we've got other organs that we could be supporting. So, um, and when, and, you know, we've been in the holistic world now for quite a long time. We, the three of us mm -hmm. have been in the holistic world for quite a long time. So when you go, yeah, support liver kidney, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's like, well, wait a minute. A lot of people don't know what that translates to in layman's terms. So um, do you guys want to give them like a brief explanation on like why we're supporting the liver and the kidney in your dog and what, how can somebody tell if their dog's liver or kidney needs to be supported? Yeah, yeah that's a great question. <laughs> you want me? I can do it. Um, so liver and kidney health is like the liver is responsible for filtering out toxins um, from the body. Yeah. Um, the biggest problem that dogs and, and humans as well, we live in an environment that is so toxic. It's, it contains like unnatural amounts of toxins just simply now we just live in a completely industrialized um society now we, we um but and, but sorry to interrupt but for dogs and cats it's actually even uh worse because of the pet food, the quality of the pet food and the right. ingredients that are being used for pet food so there's a lot of gmo ingredients there's a lot of pesticides on top of that uh, a lot of dogs get uh yearly vaccinations which again uh, can contain heavy metals and preservatives, uh, preservatives and things like that and um, deworming, flea and tick treatment. So there's just a lot of chemicals, a lot of toxins um, that our pets are exposed to and their bodies need help processing that. So a lot of the, um, it's actually honestly one of our number one concerns that our community comes to us for help is um, skin problems yeah. and allergies. And those are oftentimes very directly related to toxin overload and um, also like things like gut problems, leaky gut, yeah. yeast overgrowth, things like that. But just supporting liver and kidney, we have had such incredible results, um, you know, yeah. enhancing all, all types of uh, pets health so even even skin problems because a lot of times you you asked earlier how do i know if my pet needs uh support mm -hmm. liver and kidney support so if your dog or cat has skin problems that would be for example one one way to to know yeah but personally i would support a liver and kidney health in a pet no matter if you think your dog needs it or not, like it's a preventative approach right. again. So, right. Well, and yeah. it's, and, and like you said, it's, we live in industrialized world. And so we don't think that our environment is toxic, but it actually is. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it, it's the, you know, we we're holistic people. So of course we don't use um, Febreze and all of those, you yeah. know, sense, but, um, you know, there's toxins in most people's household cleaning supplies, yeah. <clears throat> you know, even just, you know, I think of Windex that's dyed blue, that, yeah. that's a toxin people like, and you know, that's dyed blue. Um, and, and our dogs are exposed to it 
all the yeah. time. And yeah. here's a perspective. And um, I, and it really hit me several years ago. Um, and it's what caused me to stop feeding our dogs kibble. Um, mm -hmm. We have horses. And so one of our horses um, was having a health crisis and mm -hmm. we had to have the vet vets come in and intervene. And so they loaded her up with drug, loaded her up with drugs. Like it was, it was a life-saving situation. Mm -hmm. And so you, you do whatever you can. Um, yes. And so we loaded her up with pain, pain relievers and, whatever we could to try to save her life. Unfortunately, it did not work. Mm -hmm. um, and so then they, you know, dispose of the body and it goes to the dog food processing plant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know it's a gross, terrible thing to talk about, but sometimes people need to hear this, that they can be shocked into when you're feeding kibble, when you're feeding kibble, this is the, this is the meat. This is where the meat is coming from. Yeah. Typically from animals that there are not guidelines on, on antibiotics and on what drugs they can be injected with and things like that. They get the whole thing thrown at them right at death. And then they go to the slaughterhouse and then they go to make dog food and then yeah. your dog's going to eat that. And then we wonder why all of these yeah. dogs by the age of 10, half yeah. of them are getting cancer. Yeah. It's not rocket science. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. it. Unfortunately it's, it's the truth. And, yeah. um, and so for people to understand that when you feed, feed raw or you feed a homemade diet, I feed a homemade diet to my dogs. Um, you're buying human grade food. And but, that even, even with all the stuff that can be added to human grade food, it's still oodles better than the quality of the meat that goes into kibble. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Larry. I'm sorry. I should have forewarned you. I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, honestly, like this is what we talk about, you know, because like a lot of people don't know, like you see, like, like, what, do you mean? Yeah, yeah. What, like what you just said, no, like people don't know, like, well, how does that happen? You know, like there's so many loopholes within the, the, within the industry that allows for pet food manufacturers to take something like a dead horse and put it into the kibble without disclaiming it to you because that is just how it is, you know, and it's like they meat, like they, they the end up, ingredient. Yeah, they'll, they'll end up in the pet food under the ingredient as meat mail. Yeah, and it's right. like, well, it's meat mail, you know, and, and it's like it's, it's unidentified. And a few years ago, there was a scandal because uh, it has been found that um, a euthanasia drug uh, was found in pet food that actually yeah. is commonly used to euthanize pets like cats and dogs. Yeah. So and, like, all the pet and food horses and yeah. horses. Yeah. And they're wondering, well, how did it get there? Yeah. yeah. So there's only one way to get it in there. You have to put down an animal and it, there's only. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So let's change the topic now that we've sort of like shocked everybody. <laughs> Sorry. Um, hey, you know, if it, if by my sharing my story can um, convince one person to change and look, at least be open to looking at healthier options for their animals, um, and it's going to give them more longevity and, and uh, less health issues with their dog, I'm all for it. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about let's talk about the little dirty secret about the supplement industry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, the supplement industry, and this is true for humans as well, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. And there are so many um supplement companies trying to get their market share, right? Correct. By any means. You know, yeah. and the thing with supplements is that there are a few ways to make them. So you can make them using whole foods or you can make them using synthetic ingredients. 
whole foods are going to be more expensive because you actually have to get a the, the food source and then you need to dry it, grind it, and then encapsulate it or however you're going to sell it, right? And put it into that jar. Synthetics are made through chemical processes that might be poorly regulated and they are generally much, much cheaper to make. So the, the problem with supplements is that depending on the company and the way that they market it, is that they're just selling something that might not necessarily work as well because synthetic ingredients are not recognized uh, by the body like whole food vitamin sources, right? right. So whole foods, mm -hmm. they come complete with other co-nutrients uh, that, that make that vitamin or mineral complete. And bioavailable and bioavailable. Our bodies are not stupid, right? They, they recognize nutrition. So right. with synthetics, they are generally just isolates. So it's just that isolated ingredient or, or nutrient, and it does not come complete with the cofactors that make it complete. That our body needs to process this nutrient effectively. Yeah. So the problem with the, within the supplement industry is that our pets and humans are taking this stuff in, but we might not necessarily be utilizing uh, these supplements the way that we hope to be utilizing them. So, And also there are a whole range of side effects that can happen when we uh, uh, consume or when our pets consume synthetic nutrients on a daily basis, which is a especially a problem with pets again, and because our pets eat the same thing every day, right? Like not all of our pets, but a lot of pets right, eat right. the same food every day. So if if your food uh, or if your supplement has a synthetic ingredient in there, your pet is exposed to the synthetic ingredient on a daily basis. So, and do you want to talk and about then, the... And then this can lead to um, nutrient deficiencies. So so if you're, if you're taking in synthetic ingredient without the cofactors that are important also for the body, then eventually over time that can lead to a nutrient deficiency, which can lead to health problems that later down the line. With synthetic ingredients, because they're chemically made, depending on the nutrient, the source of that nutrient can, a lot of the times it comes from uh, petroleum, it comes from formaldehyde. It comes from uh, in ingredients that are have been proven to cause cancer. So we're we're, in, we're putting this into our body, and over a long period of time, they can also contain heavy metals. That's that's probably one of the biggest problems with synthetics is right. that they they are abundant in heavy metals and heavy metals over time can also lead to many other problems such as neurological concerns so um i mean like honestly the the industry the supplement industry is it's so shady you know and everyone is trying to like greenwash right greenwash everything and for us, we, we just try to like always explain that if you are trying to put um, vitamins and minerals into the body, please go for whole food sources. Yeah. So at, that's why at Podega, like we have a policy that every single product that we carry has been thoroughly vetted. So we don't just read ingredients we actually understand the ingredients and we make sure that every single ingredient that is in the products that we carry is actually synthetic free. So it actually is, all of our products are synthetic free. So that's really, really important because if you, especially because a lot of pet parents that come to us for help do have already existing health concerns. So if you're gonna use we want you to use products that are actually effective in helping your pet become healthier. And if you use synthetic supplements, that's just not going to be as effective. And the problem, again, with the supplement industry today is that everyone claims to be natural. Every single supplement says natural on, you know, like it's in and every pet food too. Everyone tries to be natural. <laughs> 
just like buzzwords that everyone right. has. Marketing. So, it's yeah. it's just marketing. It's just exactly. marketing. I've seen some of the absolute best marketing ads ever. And then you look at the ingredient list and it's like, oh my God, this is so filled with garbage. It's not even funny. And so yeah. that's going to probably be the next little thing that I'd like you guys to talk about that not many people are talking about it in the supplement industry because they don't want people to know but yeah. even if you have, uh, I've even seen some whole food supplements <clears throat> where they've sourced the, whatever I'm looking for, and it's a whole food, but then they add in all of these artificial fillers. fillers. Yeah. Can you guys chat about that for a minute? Yeah. Right, right. I mean, Larry, right? Like oh. <laughs> drives yeah. you crazy. That is that is actually what really really drives us crazy because because then because they use the whole food ingredients or the organic ingredients right then they are now allowed to say I have an organic product right but but to offset the cost of that or these organic ingredients or whole food great ingredients they put in filler ingredients yeah might use um off the top of my head, I'm thinking about, I'll just use maltodextrin, for example. Right. They'll put in maltodextrin, which is a, a filler ingredient. It's You can get it organic, but it can also come non-organic. The problem with maltodextrin, for example, is that most commonly, it's most commonly sourced from corn. And corn, America, is the number one genetically modified ingredient over 90 percent of corn is genetically modified so now you have an organic product with a an ingredient that is first of all it doesn't serve a purpose within the body so a lot of the times it's just it just lowers the cost of the product right. um and the body is not really utilizing it either so now you, you can be facing different issues depending on um if the ingredient itself is genetically modified or not, or just simply you're not getting as much effect because they completely filled up the jar with fillers. Yeah. Right. And it's yeah, something Mag that... Go ahead. Sorry? Go ahead. I was going to say magnesium sterates, another one. People see yeah, magnesium yeah. and they think, oh gosh, yeah, that's good. No, 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 no. Magnesium sterate is not good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's something that a lot of the times our customers will ask us, like, why are our supplements so small, but more expensive compared to other supplements? Like with other supplements, you, you'll get much more and it's cheaper. So it's because other supplements, first of all, use synthetics and filler ingredients. So you're actually feeding your dog more powder every day. For example, if it's a powder supplement, you're feeding your dog more powder every day, um, which also actually affects the dog's feeding experience, right? Correct. Um, but also this powder is less effective than our supplements that we offer, which are uh, which don't have any fillers and no synthetics. So you're actually feeding effective uh products and you're feeding only like a quarter of a teaspoon or exactly. even right yeah. and that's the whole thing is trying to get our animals and especially our dogs to eat the supplements that we're feeding them exactly. so um that's awesome we're gonna pause for just one second because my one of my dogs is behind me crying to get up on her bed <laughs> oh you're so silly I'll show her to you. <laughs> oh, wow. that's Lola. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Is she a puppy? No, she is the runt of the litter. Uh -huh. Um, and she's my she's three quarter Frenchie, one quarter Boston Terrier, and um, she was only three pounds when I got her, and she was four months old. Wow. wow so sorry for that brief we'll cut we'll obviously cut that out or maybe not my editor might think it's cute and go oh hey look here's lola so i you guys are just so full of amazing information and your products like it's a no-brainer like i i love the fact that you guys are 
both of you are so tuned in to um, the what's going on out there in the market and really being super diligent about let's not add to the toxins that we're feeding our animals and you know nobody intentionally feeds their dogs a supplement with the intent of giving it more toxins so a lot of it i'm sure with you guys in your business model um just like with us with red light is educate 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 and yeah. it's 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 not out there because it you know people are out there and their goal is to keep their business running and to make money and um, you know, I don't know about in Dubai, but in America, it's like people don't think less is more. They think more is more, you know. Yeah. So if I can get one pound of this versus, you know, eight ounces of this, well, at a better price, well, of course, I'm going to go with this. But they don't understand the inner workings of it. They don't understand that, like with the supplements, that it's probably full of fillers and it's, you know, and so... Um, I love the fact that you guys are so succinct with your mission and with your company and with your knowledge and being able to present it in such a way that anybody can understand it. Yes. That's so beautiful. Are you guys available? So for anybody listening or watching this, um, if they have any questions or if they want to maybe have a consult with you guys, are you available for consultations? Yes, uh, we are available for consultations at bark at podega.com. For anyone uh, who wants to learn a little more about uh, supplements and even synthetic vitamins and minerals as well, we do have lots of YouTube videos. We have a YouTube video exactly about the topic of what are synthetic vitamins and minerals and how to figure out if a supplement or pet food that you want to buy actually contains synthetic vitamins and minerals. So definitely check that out. Our YouTube channel is called Podega. And you can also find us on Instagram and Facebook at Podega. And you can also find us at podega.us because we are launching a, our store in, the, in America as well. So we will be over there to help you at podega.us. Yay! I love that. Are you coming to the U.S. soon? <laughs> well, we, we are planning um we're always like yeah. in between us because larry's from new york uh so okay. we're over there and we yeah we were always at all the like pet health uh conferences and stuff so um well, we come we're gonna here. we're gonna have to meet up then yes yeah. absolutely we're gonna have to meet up then so it was so great to have you guys you guys are absolutely awesome um, and I hope everybody enjoyed this interview with um, Larry and Charlie and please go visit their channels and, um, you know, just edu educate yourself. It's always better. Like never quit learning. If you quit learning, you're dead. So, yeah. um, and the website is podega, P-A-W-D-E-G-A -E dot U-S. Yes. Otherwise, we've got the links posted below. And thank you guys for being on my show. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for having <laughs> us. It was so awesome. Yay. We love talking about all things pet health. So yeah, <laughs> this... yeah. me too. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for watching this edition of Photonic Health Presents Health Made Simple. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications for all new Photonic Health videos.